This is the horror which Robin Hood immortalized as an ideal of righteousness. It is said that he fought against the looting rulers and returned the loot to those who had been robbed. But that is not the meaning of the legend which has survived. He is remembered not as a champion of property, but as a champion of need. Not as a defender of the robbed, but as a provider of the poor. He is held to be the first man who assumed a halo of virtue by practicing charity with wealth which he did not own, by giving away goods which he had not produced, by making others pay for the luxury of his pity. He is the man who became the symbol of the idea that need, not achievement, is the source of rights, that we don't have to produce, only to want, that the earned does not belong to us, but the unearned does. He became a justification for every mediocrity who, unable to make his own living, has demanded the power to dispose of the property of his betters by proclaiming his willingness to devote his life to his inferiors at the price of robbing his superiors. It is this foulest of creatures, the double parasite who lives on the sores of the poor and the blood of the rich, whom men have come to regard as a moral ideal, and this has brought us to a world where the more a man produces, the closer he becomes to the loss of all his rights, until, if his ability is great enough, he becomes a rightless creature delivered as prey to any claimant, while in order to be placed above rights, above principles, above morality, placed where anything is permitted to him, even plunder and murder, all a man has to do is to be in need. Do you wonder why the world is collapsing around us? That is what I am fighting, Mr. Reardon, until men learn that of all human symbols Robin Hood is the most immoral and the most contemptible. There will be no justice on earth and no way for mankind to survive. 